You know, as a studio bass player, this man here backed many great reggae artists, including Justin Hines on Duke Reed's Trevor, Trev, Treasure Isle label. He was a member of Skin and Flesh and Bones, along with Ansel Collins on keyboards, Tarzan on keyboards, Ranchy McLean on guitar. This group backed Al Brown on his hit, Here I Am Baby. Many great hits. Yeah, yeah man, that was um, another song that um, you, 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 you had, um, e, um, Here I Am Baby by Al Green. Yes. And it was a popular song, but when we transform it into reggae, <laughs> Toad soul, the other one. Sorry to say that. But <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask this. How like long? $2,000 songs uh, record was sold in a day. There you go. There in you that go. time, yeah. There you go. That guitar you have in your hand now, how long you have had it? Well, this, 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 was, this was like um, a five year old guitar still. You know? And it but, has, but it has created some a major lot, hits. A lot huh? of hit songs, you know? Yes, yes, yes. L let me ask you this. Some of the great artists that you have performed with, who jumps out in front of you right now? I say, come on, give me that name. It's always Dennis Brown. Uh, Dennis Brown, um, Prince of Reggae. I was mus his musical director for like 19, 20 years. Yes. Yeah. And I've toured the world all over with Dennis Brown. You were with him on that last tour in Brazil, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. how, tell us about that tour. Where really went? That tour, how, how was, how was um, that tour? I just knew that something was going to happen. Because I, I went to Miami three times and I had to come back home. I mean, like, we were supposed to catch a flight from Miami to Brazil. And... It was three artists on the show. When I went to Miami, you hear that one of the artists not coming. And then when I well, come back to Jamaica, and then say, come back up. They were ready when I went there. They weren't ready again. And then I said to myself, so, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going. And then everybody decided that they are going to go. I, well, this is going to look like I'm the troublemaker now. So I said, all right, let's go. And there was something. I, just, I could just feel it. I didn't know what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. How was it towards uh, it was it was good. Concert was good and everything. Uh -huh. And then that the rest is history. Yeah, um, the rest is history. Yes, yes. Uh, the prince, the, the true prince of reggae. True prince of reggae. And and uh, when you when you talk about now, you know we and and my my audience we're talking to Lloyd Parks, I should say, uh, the Honorable Lloyd Parks, O.D. Out of distinction which you received sometime in 1999 from the government 1999. Um. Let, let me ask you this, Lloyd. Um, it is obvious that you come from a household that necessarily the foundation, you, there must have been some foundation from your parents there. What role did your parents play in, in, in the things that you did? Or who was the fundamental inspirer to Lloyd Park? Well... I was born a music lover, but there was an uncle that used to play, play in a, um, a calypso band, scare calypso band, and whenever he, he's going out to play, I said, Let me, can I come with you, you know, and can I sing a one tune, and, you know, and it was from, real, from there, and it, it, it really helps me a lot mm -hmm. to develop my confidence and all of that, you know, but that, that was one of the um, source of inspiration. Right, right. And, and y you, you did a lot of work with Coxon. Duke Reed. How, how, did that, how did that relationship go? No, not not. Um, I mean, Coxon. I did a lot of work with um, like um, singing with yes. Coxon. Yes. I played on like um, about um, artists play um, play songs for artists like Justin Hines and the yes. Dominoes. Yes. But I think that was the only artist I played for. Right. At Duke, Duke, Duke Reed. But for Joe Joe Gibbs. Joe Gibbs. Yes. I played all. I was a studio band for Joe Gibbs. Yeah. For for um, Randy's recording, recording studio, and Channel One. Incidentally, um, original Revolution. You hear about the revolutionaries? Yes, yes, it was yes. really like the same skin, flesh, and bones yes, okay. transforming the revolution as a studio band. So that's where it really started. And and yeah. what what type of relationship you have with the Sly and Robbie, the Dunbars oh. and all those? When we were like um, kids, we, we all we all came from um, Waterhouse and. Um, Sly was a, is a self-taught drummer, self-taught musician. And you know, self-taught musicians are the greatest musicians. I, I, was, I could say I was a self-taught musician as well, but um, Sly used to have his sister Pale beating his drum. I would have a sardine pan guitar. <laughs> and I would say I was my favorite musician, and he would say his favorite drummer. And we played, and we had, we had a little... Luckily, we had a little tape record where we could tape stuff and play back and, you know. But um, 
when it comes on to um, studio recording, I, I, I brought slide on back to the studio, you know, and, and, and we, we, that's, where, that's where we really started. You know, I brought him there and, and become a studio musician. And, and today, slide on back is one of the greatest yes. um, recording, recording drummer. Recording drummer. Yeah. Interesting. You know, the, 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 you've mentioned now many of the great men in music. Who are some of the women in music, reggae music, who stands up for you? The? Women in reggae music who stands up for you? Well, I really would have to say Marcia Griffiths is one, um, Judy Mott, uh, Palm Hall, Nadine Sutherland, uh, well, just to name a few. Mm. You know, the, the reason I ask that because it's, you know, we live in a world today we have to be gender sensitive, right? Yeah. And I know that there, there always seems to be a lot more emphasis on the male in reggae music as opposed yeah. to the women. Yeah. But I, I, I want to take you back and ask you a question here because I mentioned that about the We The People band and, and, and it's almost like a, a, a dying situation because you don't have bands like that these days because of the whole instrumentality where one can use a computer to do many things. Mm -hmm. um, for We The People, Lloyd Parks now, because, you know, there's the business side of music. Yeah. Has the business side of music been f been fair to Lloyd Parks and We The People? Well... When you look at it from an see, economic standpoint. When you're really a lover, dedicated musician, you never get your full share. Because you're, you're always just willing to go and do the work, you know? Do you but think sometimes that, that has been exploited because of that dedication to the... To yes, the, to yes. But what... Um, I still would say that um, I've received enough to keep me going, but it, it, it could be better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it can always be better. You know, yeah, and, and, you know and, what and, I'm saying? But especially in a world today where you see these young persons or we could consider upstarts and instantaneously yeah. they are the pinnacle economically speaking right and then you have those in the trenches been there for years with the love and the dedication mm. although they said the the, the 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 hedgehog always wins out over the hair but they're the same token <laughs> there's an economic <laughs> aspect to it yeah right. um the the, the the criticism many times now though is that um the recognition or the opportunities yeah. seem to be lesser for entities like Lloyd Parks and We The People, those type of foundation type of music, especially when you compare it to today's genre of music. What's your take on today's music as the way it is right now? Well, um, the, from, from time to time, the music changes, you know? And sometimes, maybe by the time, it's time for you to get your something, some temporary music come, contemporary music, and record company gravitate to that even more than the real stuff. You know, and and it gets it gets more promotion and everything. So basically, I would say the opportunity is always for the new stuff. But I know what we have here will last forever, and that's very important to me. 